Welcome to Mode Bespoke, I'm Atenas, and today we're going to be crocheting our last project of 2020. So this is going to be a quick work pair of mittens. You can make these really super fast, whether you're making them for children or adults. And they're great for a last minute present if you still need one. But uh, yeah, let's get started. <music> So here's a quick look at the mittens we're going to be crocheting today. Now these are for a five to six year old. However, you can crochet this project for adults or for children. We're going to be using a medium yarn. So this is a number four medium worsted or Aran yarn. And I'm going to use a four millimeter hook. Now you can also use a five millimeter if you don't have a four. You're also going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn or tapestry needle, a stitch marker, and a stitch counter. If you have one, this one's optional. Um, I use this ring counter, which I'll link down in the description box. Now, the yarn I'm using is a color changing yarn. So my mittens are gonna have just different colors throughout. If you don't want to use a color changing yarn, you can use a solid color if you prefer. All right, so for these mittens, like I said before, this is for a five to six year old kid. If you're gonna make these for an adult, you're gonna begin with a chain of eight. If you're making them for children, it's gonna be a chain of six. And if you're making these for a baby, you're ne you need to start with a chain of four. As you work the pattern, so as you add rows, you will have to try them on. So try them on and adjust them as needed. You're gonna begin this project with a slip knot. So wrap the yarn around two fingers, insert your hook in the loop, grab the yarn that's behind it and pull it through. Once you've got that, you're gonna tighten the knot by pulling on the two threads individually. Now you're gonna begin with a chain. So to chain, you're gonna wrap the yarn around your hook and you're gonna pull this top loop through the bottom loop for one. Let's repeat, so it's yarn over, pull through for two, yarn over, pull through, three. I'm making the small pair, so I'm making the second mitten to the one that you've just seen. So I need to make a chain of six. So this chain doesn't have to measure any exact measurement. It is just the very top part of the mitten. You're going to add width to it in the next few rows. So for row number one, you're gonna chain one and then you're going to skip the chain you just made and work into the second one. So inserting your hook into the second chain, and this is the second chain from your hook, we're gonna begin a an extended single crochet. So you're gonna insert your hook into that second stitch, you're gonna yarn over, and you're gonna pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over, and you're gonna pull that loop you just made through the first loop on your hook. You're gonna be left with two loops, and now you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. So that was pretty, pretty simple, and that was an extended single crochet. You're gonna work an extended single crochet in every stitch along the row. Leave the last stitch. We will work on that one together. For those of you that need to see this again, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and you're gonna pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you are gonna yarn over and pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through two. And there you go. So I'll just continue working this extended single crochet until you get here to that very last stitch. At the last stitch, we have to create the round and we have to increase just to make the glove a little bit, or I guess the mitten really, the mitten a little bit wider. So in that last chain, you are going to crochet three extended single crochets. So there's one, you're gonna insert your hook into that same stitch and make a second one and then you're gonna repeat a third time so that you have a total of three extended single crochets. This is going to create the little turn and we're gonna be able to work on the bottom part of our work. Skip this first stitch. We're gonna work into the second one because in this first stitch is where you created those three single crochets. So skip that one, insert your hook in the next stitch and then begin another row of extended single crochet. So we're going to be working in the round. So this is going to be the end of the row, but it is going to be the end of round one. 
you're gonna have one last stitch here it's a little bit hidden that last one you're gonna work your final extended single crochet and now you can use your stitch marker so place your stitch marker in that same stitch that you just crocheted into this is going to tell you that that is the end of the round and it's going to also help you find the beginning of the next round so this is the end of round one we're going to work a total of three rounds for this size so i'll talk to you more about this here in just a moment but we're going to work three rounds and in that first stitch of round number two so this next one right over here we have to create another turn so we're going to work three extended single crochets into that same stitch just like we did on the other side so we've got one two and then three and there you go now that created our round you're going to work an extended single crochet all the way across and once you get to the end look for the top centermost stitch so this one right up here so let's line this up right here so just try to find the one that's most in the center and that's where you're going to do your extended your three extended single crochets work in the round for three rounds and that'll create the width that you need for this five to six year old mitten if you're going to make this for an adult try it on it should cover the top part of your fingers you can add additional rounds if it is not wide enough the same applies for a baby mitten so if you need to add rounds just jot down how many rounds you added and once you've completed your three rounds or however many you needed try it on it should fit the top of your fingers or like your fingertips it should be nice and comfy and not too snug so you can wiggle your fingers all right now we're going to work on the body of the mitten so we have to add a few rounds just to add length to the mitten now this is going to be different depending on the size of your hand so as you crochet additional rounds try it on and that way you can see how about how it's going to fit you or your child so I'm going to start with about or at least I would suggest you start about 8 to 12 rounds and then try it on so once I crochet the additional rounds I need for the mitten I'm working on I'll show you how to measure it so let's start working on this uh, these new rounds and for these rounds they're a lot easier than the rounds we did before you no longer need to add the three extended single crochets you're just gonna work one extended single crochet in every stitch along the round this round right here is gonna be round one so we did the three rounds for the fingertips and now for the body this is round one and you're gonna begin with just one extended single crochet in the top centermost stitch of the round and then just do one in the next stitch one in the next stitch and just continue working this way so one stitch for every stitch of the round until you complete about eight to twelve rounds so if this is for a baby you you won't need eight to twelve rounds you could probably work maybe two or three and then try it on I don't have a sizing chart on the website or anywhere I'm gonna see if I can find one um, if I can look in the description box below I'll see if I can find just the anything either for mittens or for gloves or some kind of sizing chart for hands but look for that in the description box um, if I found one it will be listed there all right so I have crocheted a total of 12 rounds and when you try on the mitten keep in mind that this is a mitten for a five to six year old it should fit you all the way down to about the length of where your thumb begins so it should be a lot longer than this remember this is for a kid so then once you have that length we're gonna add just a tiny bit more length to the mitten but you're gonna need to leave an open space for the thumb so we're no longer going to work in the round we're gonna work in rows so we're gonna begin with a chain one you're going to turn your work around and beginning on the very first stitch so this very first extended single crochet you're gonna create another extended single crochet so you're gonna stitch one one stitch for every stitch up until you get here right to the stitch right next to where you began do not close the round remember that you need space to add the thumb so you're gonna stop in the stitch right before you close the round so work one for one I'll see you when I finish the round okay so here I am at the end I stopped one stitch before that first stitch that we crocheted we're gonna chain one 
and then you're going to turn your work around and then you're going to begin row number two so beginning on that very first stitch of the round you're going to begin again one for one until you have a total of about five rounds you are making this mitten in any other size just try it on and adjust as needed so work your five rounds remember to leave that center space open and i'll see you in a moment so i have completed five rows and i added an additional row so i did five plus one so that's six because on the sixth sixth wow i can't speak on that sixth round or i guess row you will close the round so it will become round one so you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch and you're going to slip stitch. You're going to chain one and now you're ready to work in the round. So let's pause here for a moment just to review. So we did five rows of just the extended single crochet and then an additional row. That row you close into a round. And now that you've got your round ready, you've chained one, you're ready to begin round number seven. So all you do is you work an extended single crochet all the way around until you complete the round. Once you complete the round, you need to try on the mitten. Make sure that it reaches all the way to the bottom of your hand or your wrist. If the mitten doesn't quite reach your wrist, add a few more rounds. So maybe try another two rounds and then try the mitten back on. Add as many rounds as you need so that the mitten reaches the wrist before you add on the elastic band at the bottom. Okay, moving on. So the elastic band on the bottom is just going to be double crochets, and this is going to be front and back post double crochets. If you followed the channel for a while, you have seen this before in hat brims. We're going to use it again here for the bottom of the mitten as it creates a really nice elastic that's kind of thick and it helps keep the mitten on your wrist. We're going to need to begin a double crochet. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch over. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And once you have three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So that was a double crochet. We're going to repeat this one more time in the stitch right next to it. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. But I am stuck. Okay. Once you've got three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Repeat this in all of the stitches of the round. Once you've completed your round and you got to that first double crochet again, we're going to begin with the front and back posts. Now for this pattern, you're going to work two front post double crochets and then two back post double crochets. You don't need to have a perfect or a specific, I should say, a specific number of stitches in the round. It is a very forgiving pattern. So we're going to begin with just the two front post double crochets. And we'll talk more about the pattern here in a moment. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook, not on the stitch, so not the top part of the stitch, but this long part right here or the post. Insert your hook behind the post. So the post is going to be right up on the hook like this. You're going to yarn over and you're going to pull up a loop. You're going to have your three loops and you're just going to finish the stitch like a double crochet. So yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over, pull through two. The next stitch is also going to be a front post double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook behind the post so that it looks like this. You're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You're going to have three loops on your hook and now you're going to yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. So those are the two front posts. We're going to follow it up with two back post double crochet. You're going to yarn over and this time you're going to insert your hook behind your fabric. You're going to push it towards the front and in front of your post and you're going to push the post backward so that it, that's why it is called a backward or a, what is it? A back post double crochet. You're going to pull up your loop and you close your double crochet. So let's repeat. Yarn over, insert your hook in the front of your post. So that way you can push the post backward. So here it is. Push the post back, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you close the double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Continue this sequence all the way around. So two front posts, 
two back posts, two front posts, until you make it all the way around. Like I was saying earlier, you might not have a perfect number of stitches, so you might be off by just one front post or one back post. That's okay. It is a very forgiving product. You can't see the elastic band very clearly, even if you are using a solid color. The reason we're working with the front and back posts is because it closes up the stitching just enough so that it holds onto the wrist. So it creates a very comfortable, very light elastic. Especially if you're making these mittens for children, you don't want it to be too tight, as they might not always tell you that the mitten is tight. So the, those back posts help hold the mitten a little bit tighter without hurting your wrist. So, like I was saying, if you have an extra double crochet or you're missing one, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Now, for those of you that want to make a bigger elastic, so this right here is where I would stop for my size mitten. If you want to make this a little bit wider, then you just have to extend the stitch. So I'll show you what I mean here. So if you get to a front post double crochet, so this is what those look like, the back post double crochet looks like this. So it's got this row running right in front of it. So we begin here with two front posts. So I'm just gonna crochet one front post in each of the front post double crochets of the previous row. So if it was a front post, crochet a front post like that. So I've extended the stitch. If it is a back post, work a back post. So just repeat whatever stitch you crocheted in the previous round. And this way, you're, you're gonna continue the pattern. It'll just extend it. It'll look a little bit like it's ripped and you'll be able to crochet as many rounds as you want. So if you want a much longer elastic or you want your mitten to fit a little bit like longer up on your wrist, that's a good method to extend it. Once you are finished, you are gonna work a slip stitch in the stitch right next to the final stitch you crochet. So we're just gonna insert our hook and slip stitch. We're gonna finish this off with a chain, so just chain one, and then you're gonna cut your yarn. So cut a nice, decent length tail because you are gonna to have to weave this in. So we're gonna cut right here. We're gonna pull our hook out, and we're gonna pull out the yarn, and there you go. So now all we have left to do is work on the thumb. So the thumb part is really quite simple. We're gonna be working this in the round and we're gonna be using the same stitch. So it's gonna be an extended single crochet. We're gonna work a decrease at the top of the stitch in every row. But our very first row is just going to be a foundation round. So you're gonna insert your hook into the bottom stitch, make a loop on your hook, pull it through the stitch and chain one. And now you're gonna begin with the extended single crochets in every stitch along the round. So a stitch looks kind of like this. So there's one stitch right next to it. Here's another stitch, and then here's another one. If you can't find the stitch, just move the fabric around a little and it'll be a lot more visible. So beginning here, I am in the stitch following that chain that we just made. You're just gonna begin with your first extended single crochet. Now I highly recommend that you count the number of stitches you work because you do have to make a second matching mitten. So make sure you count the number of stitches you worked all the way around. Once you've worked all the way around and you're back at the beginning, you're just gonna work an extended single crochet in the first stitch right next to that chain one that you did at the very beginning of the round. This is gonna be at the end of round one. Starting with round two and for all of the other rounds you're gonna crochet, we are going to start to work decreases. So the decrease is gonna happen at the top of the thumb. So right above where the webbing is between your index finger and your thumb, that's about where we're gonna work our increases. I'm sorry, not increases, decreases. So work an extended single crochet in every stitch up until you get to that top part of the thumb. So like I said, right kind of by where the webbing is between the index finger and the thumb. Once you get to that center part, we're gonna work these two top stitches, we're gonna decrease, so we're gonna turn them into just one stitch. You're gonna insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you're gonna insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Once you have three loops on your hook, you're just gonna yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two, and that was the decrease. 
you're going to make a decrease in every round. Once you finish your decrease, you're going to work an extended single crochet in every stitch along the round until you get to the top of the thumb again. So right where you did the decrease just now, you're going to work another one. So make the thumb as long as you need in order for it to fit you. Work in the round, decrease at the top, and then work just a single extended crochet all the way around up until the decrease. Measure your mittens as you work on them. So that way you make sure that the thumb is as long as you need it to be and that it is fitting comfortably. If it is too tight, then don't decrease anymore. Either go back around, remove your stitching and then stop decreasing. And then once you get the length you need, you can just close up the, uh, the thumb part. When you finish and you have the length that you need for the thumb, you're gonna finish the stitching by making a chain one and you're gonna cut a long piece of thread. Make sure that it is a somewhat lengthy tail end because you're gonna use this end to sew. So we need to sew the top of the thumb closed. So you will also need your yarn or tapestry needle for this next part. So let's pull out our hook, tighten this little knot, and we're gonna get ready to sew. All right, so the easiest way to sew this top part is to just sew across. So you do big, just a big stitch from one side to the other, switching directions and every stitch. That way it'll close up the top. It won't create any specific kind of pattern. It'll just seal up the top nice and tight. Once you've closed up the top part of the thumb, weave in your ends. So if you don't know how to weave in ends, I do have a video tutorial where I teach you how to do that. I'll link it in, link it in the description box below. But you'll need to go through, weave in all of the tail ends for the mitten, including the one here at the fingertips, and you are done. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Like I said before, this is the last video tutorial of 2020, so I will not see you again until January. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you that, subs that have subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram, and if you wanna see any of my patterns, you can visit my website, the link is in the description box below. I'll see you all again next year.